Welcome. This is our afterthought segment that's only seen on the web, uh, where we spend a little more time with our guest uh, on our program to drill down a little bit deeper into some of the uh, topics that we were talking about. Today we have with us George, uh, Commissioner George LaPointe, the Commissioner of the Maine Department of Marine Resources, and Robin Alden, the Executive Director of the Penobscot East Resource Center. So thank you for being here. We had a really good discussion that eight and a half minutes flies by, so we have more to talk about for sure. Uh, and we were talking about some of these things in the, in the break, too. Um, one thing I wanted to start off with was in the first segment I had uh, uh, Rob Schneider from Island Institute and George, uh, uh, Glenn Libby from Port Clyde here. And Glenn was telling the story about this uh, New Jersey couple that moved into the area. And they were so excited about moving to the area, because the Midcoast area, I think, and because they could walk down to the dock and buy fresh fish. And boy, were they surprised when they walked down to the dock and there were no fishermen there. So I, talk about that, Robin, the impact that that has, the changes that we've seen in that map. When we look at the chart, the changes over the last 20 years? I, I think this has sort of been one of those invisible things because in the yeah. marketplace you get imported fish or fish from out of state that, that comes in, and so you're not as aware of it. But we have lost our ground fish industry. And, mm -hmm. um, and that, what that means is, first of all, um, here's this bounty that people came over from Europe to catch off of Monhegan that we have no access to fish anymore and in some cases it's depleted mm -hmm. and needs to be rebuilt. That's the eastern part of the state. Yep. But um, what the implication of this for our fishing communities, right the whole length of the coast, is that when you are 90 percent as the communities in our area from Penasco Bay East are dependent on one fishery, lobster, you are highly vulnerable and it's not just the ground fish industry mm -hmm. you're in danger of losing it's the fishing industry because that diversity is what makes a business work right and you were mentioning the uh, the price or the the uh, cash value drop value drop yeah when we had that. um you know in we, we all have heard in the state about the, the drop in price last year mm -hmm. uh, you know starting in october when when a lot of prices were starting to drop actually but um two years ago uh our, our lobster uh uh, catch was worth 280 or 285 million dollars last year. 240 million dollars. So um, I think it was actually more catch and mm -hmm. less value. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that means to, to our entire state, mm. to coastal communities, to individual fishermen is is uh, on average they have you know 75 cents on the dollar in their pocket mm -hmm. compared to the year before. Right. And, and the, the state has been reeling with that. Right. Incredible effect through the economy is and tremendous. I think, I think for example in the town of Stonington, it was a I think it was a three million dollar drop. That's a lot of money to take out right. of a community right. of, of 2,500 people. And unfortunately for people in the fishery, um, at the price, at the time when the price was dropping, costs were going up. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you mentioned herring when we were discussing it mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. because the herring catches have gone down, the, the price per pound or the price per tote has gone up, mm -hmm. and so their operating costs have gone up significantly at a time when their revenue yeah. has gone down. Let's, let's talk about the herring for a minute, as long as sure. you brought it up. Um, the new herring catch limits, uh, what I saw in the, in the Bangor Daily News last week, uh, the headline was, herring limits, herring catch may plummet. Right. Caught my attention. I read sure. the article. Uh, and so they have also, uh, that's really going to significantly impact Maine's $250 million lobster industry. Uh, your own uh, Terry Stockwell, director of the external affairs for your yeah. agency, was quoted in that article as saying, it's going to be severe. There's no way to sugarcoat it. So. I'm glad, I'm, what's, I'm glad he said it. Yeah, what's going to um, happen? Because um, the catch is going to, or the and okay. why, why is the why is the herring catch down that much quickly? Um, the, the herring catch is down. The, 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 we we are bound in, in federal law to to, to um, use population assessments called stock assessments, um, and and with the last changes to the federal fisheries law, um, the, there was a separation of setting a, a catch limit mm -hmm. from the allocation. Mm -hmm. The scientists, now a, a group called the Science and Statistics Committee, right. sets the, set, the, the catch limit. And they're all supposed to t also supposed to take into account uncertainty. So the last assessment that was done, um, the, the, some of the biomass numbers were down, but there's a high degree of uncertainty that's been consistent through time. Mm -hmm. So they ratcheted down the uncertainty mm -hmm. factor. And so our nearshore catches, um, if you go back five years ago, were 60,000 metric tons, and then they were reduced to 50. Um, last year they were 41. Next year maybe 25. And I saw and that. So, and that's and so what's going to make up that difference? Ow. Um, what are they going to use for bait? Well, they're going to do some. They'll get they'll get herring from Canada, but again that will go back into the assessment. Um, we've used a lot of menhaden. Um, fishermen have had a lot of discussion about how they can be more efficient. I heard somebody uh, about they'll they'll use it. Um, uh, unfortunately, we had a big problem with artificial bait. They'll probably use things they shouldn't, um, you know, um, and, uh, uh, and hide baits and whatnot. But people, people will be creative 
and people will use less bait, and people will be impacted because if, if you don't have bait in a trap, guess what? Lobsters aren't yeah. going to walk into it. Is so there going to be a new industry that grows up around the bait? I mean, there's, there have been attempts at that. There have been lots of yeah. attempts over the anything, years. Anything in the offing, anything coming that's going to... Nothing that's going to change our decision yet. situation yeah. significantly. All right. And, All right. and we had a lobster advisory council meeting, the statewide group that advises us, right after these numbers came out, and, and people were very concerned. Um, and, and there's actually a meeting today in Portland to talk about how some of the assumptions and how that will be split among areas. Mm -hmm. And so people are very concerned still, but they said, let's breathe deep um, and, and then figure out what our next steps are. There's a group of fishermen um, from Stonington that are down at the meeting today, and their main thing is we've got to know the numbers because this, the herring is the basis for everything, right. and we've got to have as good science as possible, and that means... Uh, yep. And the other uh, thing for Maine... Uh, um, is our sardine plant? You know, we've got a we've got one sardine cannery still in in Prospect Harbor, um, and if their um, available supply goes down by fifty percent, they are um, in big trouble. Okay, um, I'm going to ask one final question, just about ground fishing in general, because we got to we got to wrap. But um, give us your assessment. I mean, I know it's, I know it's crystal ball time. I know you guys hate that, but where are we going to be ten years from now? How is ground fishing? Is it going to come back? Uh, are we going to have more than seventy boats? Are we going to be happy, lucky to sustain where we are? I think we have to be um, determined as a state that we will change the picture, that we will have lots more boats, but that they won't necessarily be catching. Um, as, as George said, we probably were overfishing back in the mm -hmm. heydays of the, mm -hmm. of the 80s. Um, my vision is that we have many boats fishing groundfish part-time, in the near shore area mm -hmm. and have rebuilt the, the fish in the near shore area, which is where all the critical habitat is. We don't have protection in much of along the mm -hmm. coast of Maine in the near shore area. If we could protect that and, and make sure that it doesn't get fished out when the fish start doing their thing and coming back, that could be producing fish for the offshore boats as well. Okay. Um, I hope the Portland Fish Exchange stays alive and that we have lobstermen who have a chance to go ground fishing part of the year. Mm -hmm. yes, Ten years. Ten years. Um, one of the, 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 the things that's lost in the current picture is people think we failed in rebuilding groundfish stocks broadly because we, we deal with it as a New England uh, uh, phenomenon. And we have, you know, the difficulty with groundfish is if you think it's one fish, um, it goes up and down. It's about 20 different stocks. And so mm -hmm. for some things like haddock on George's Bank, they've been hugely successful. Redfish <laughs> has been hugely successful. And so one of the things we do is a species is up and then a species is down. And so we kind of do these mini boom and busts. And I hope we move beyond that um, as much as you can in the natural environment. Uh, and then, um, you know, retaining Maine's place in the ground fish fishery overall, re um, you know, protecting the Portland Fish Exchange is, is important. And then being smart about what do we, what do we want fisheries to look like? You know, there's, a, a, again, as I mentioned earlier, a tendency to say, let's draw a line in the sand. And, and you know, th those people who have permits now are the only people who are going to have mm -hmm. permits forever. Um, and so are there ways to get creative about, you know, uh, restoring the fishery? And there probably are, and they tie back to having permits and right. catch. Right. Um, and importantly, not letting a lot of boats into the fishery that then expand their catch and, and jeopardize our chances at rebuilding it. Okay, good. So just possibilities there, some optimistic, but gotta have to, the focus has to be on. It optimistic like determination. Right, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. All right, we're going to wrap it there. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you for Thanks sticking for around. Me. I think this was very important. Appreciate it. Thank you all.